Okay, party people, at this time in the semester, we should have completed this draft right here, the three-piece puzzle draft. We drafted these three pieces. We drafted them you know, from a front angle, from a front view here, from the side view. Uh, we made this big rectangle, right? And then we had the smaller rectangle in the middle on all three pieces. And then pieces two and three had this unique sub-notch in them. Well, now that we've done that on paper, we're going to do that on the computer as well. And I'm going to, you know, you're going to get an opportunity to see what that's like to do on the computer versus on paper. So you all have access to a program called SketchUp. To get there, um, you can go to your Rapid Identity uh, if you'd like, and you can search for SketchUp, and you'll see it's right here. You can click on it there. It'll ask you to log in and all that. You can also, you can skip that step, and you can just go to this website right here, ed, and let me just open that in a new tab to show you what you need to type here, edu.sketchup.com, just like this up here. And hit return, and it will take you there to the SketchUp website. Now, SketchUp is an application that is based on, in a web browser. So um, the cool thing is it uses your Google Drive account, and it's all, you know, everybody has access to it through your Humble ISD uh, login. So make sure you log in when, and I'm not showing you how to log in right now because I'm already logged in, but when it asks you to log in, you will go ahead and use your um, Humble ISD credentials. Uh, we're going to open up a, a new document. Uh, if you go to the home, if you're on the home page here, under Create New, you're going to create a new document from feet and inches. We're always going to use feet and inches, and you'll see this little guy. Now, what I'm going to do in this video is just show you the basics of how to start moving around SketchUp, um, and then I'm going to turn you loose to go ahead and, and use the dimensions from your original draft, uh, your hand-drafted three-piece puzzle, and you're going to try to create those in SketchUp here. So we have this little dude here. If we select him, it highlights the whole guy. And then if you press backspace or delete on your keyboard, he'll go away. So go ahead and do that. If you have a, a, a mouse um, with a scroll wheel, you can use that scroll wheel to zoom in and out like this. Actually, let's put that guy back on there. You can kind of see more of a sense of space. So if I scroll in and out like this, you can see I get closer. Um, if you press the O button on your keyboard, by the way, guys, it's all about um, it's all about uh, the keyboard shortcuts when it comes to SketchUp. All about the keyboard shortcuts. So if I press O, I can hold that down um, and orbit. So I'm clicking my mouse and I'm holding that button down and then moving my mouse around to orbit around something. If you hold down the Shift button while you've got the Orbit tool selected, you'll see this little hand grab guy, and that allows you to move in a different way, um, just sort of in an up and down sort of way, um, and left and right. But Orbit, it kind of orbits you around from one dimension to the next. Um, now this guy is always facing us, so let's get rid of him for a second, and um, you can see the geometry better if I make an actual solid. So follow along with me just to get used to the tools. Um, by the way, that, that orbit, when you press O, um, that tool is not there, sorry, down here, is this tool right here. So you can come over here to the left-hand side where there's a toolbar. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is click on the, let's do the rectangle tool. I could come over here and click on rectangle. Or what I usually do, guys, is use the R button on my keyboard. So select the origin. This is like your home starting point. And now here's what you need to do. This is very important. You need to click on it and then release your click. Don't drag. If you start clicking and dragging in SketchUp, you're going to get really confused. Don't don't drag. So do a single click and then move where you want to be. We'll just make a little bit of a rectangle here. And then click again, a second click. All right. Well, that's interesting. It tells you, tells you that that was a part of the golden mean. Don't worry about that. Okay, so now you've got a two-dimensional uh, plane is what that would be called. So I'm going to orbit around. You can kind of see. Um, technically, uh, in SketchUp, this plane has no depth to it. It only has the length and the width. It doesn't have any thickness. Okay, so this is not uh, a legitimate you know, figure in the real world. Like th th there would be even a piece of paper has a little bit of thickness to it. 
Um, so what we need to do is give this plane some thickness. So we're going to select the next tool that you need to know about called the push-pull tool. And the keyboard shortcut for that is P. So if I click P, my new tool is going to be selected. Alternatively, we come over here and click on this tool right there, push-pull tool. So there it is over there. So again, don't click and drag. I'm going to do a single click. Now, SketchUp has an engine in it called the inferencing engine. And what that means is it tries to anticipate what you want to do, and then it kind of suggests that to you um, to make sure that you're all, you and SketchUp are all on the same page. So what that means is, um, oops, I actually didn't mean to click there. Uh, what that means is if I roll my mouse over this, this plane, this rectangle, you see it kind of does this blue dot thing, kind of highlights it and just indicates to you, hey, this is the uh, piece of geometry that we're talking about, right? And then you can click your mouse to say, yeah, that's the piece we're talking about. And now if I move my mouse up, you'll see the rectangle starts to grow into uh, a solid shape, a three-dimensional shape. And I can make that as tall as I want. Now, I haven't made a second click yet, so I'm still able to kind of go up and down with this. I could also go into the you know negative direction if I wanted to. We'll stay up here in the positive direction. And you can, at this point, actually type in. You see in the bottom right-hand corner of my window, it says distance, and then it has a number that's highlighted. Well, because that, that's highlighted right now, I can actually type in any number I want. Let me just type in, like, 3. And then if I want feet, I need to put the little um, apostrophe next to it to indicate that it's feet. And now I can press Enter, and it will snap to that exact dimension. Okay. So that's a really useful feature that you're going to need to know about. Now, at this point, I have a bunch of different pieces of geometry. I have three planes that I can see here. If you orbit around, you'll see you know, the other three planes down here. Um, you, know, you can see this, these three planes. Um, but the thing about it is you might be thinking in your brain, hey, that is my block of wood or whatever. But SketchUp doesn't think about this as a single piece. At the moment, if I click the spacebar, um, I'm using my select tool, which is up here. So at the moment, SketchUp is thinking of this as six different planes, um, however many different lines, like edges is actually what those would be called. How many edges does a cube have? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, you can count them. And then, uh, you know, and that's it. So it's, it's different planes and different edges, but they're not actually... Um, linked together. So what you need to do at this point, after you make a shape, a solid like this, is click three times. One, two, three. And now it will select all the planes and all the edges that are like touching each other. Okay. And now, once it's all selected like that, right click and go over to Make Component. This is a very important step as you're building your models in SketchUp is making components. So let's go to, let's do this one more time just so everybody follows along. Once you've made a solid, triple click 1 2 3, not double click. That's a double click. I did that on accident. Triple click 1 2 3. And then right click on it and say make component. It's going to pop up with this dialog window. You can define it, you know, that this is a name. I don't know why it says definition. You could just name it. Um, you know, you can name it whatever you want. You can put a description if that's helpful to you. And I don't, you know, don't worry about any of this other stuff. Okay. And then you're going to click the big blue button down here. Now it is a component. So now if I select it, instead of just selecting this plane where I clicked, or if I click on an edge, it see it selects the whole thing. Um, this is very useful because now I can actually move this thing around um, and everything would move together. And uh, you can play with that and see what would happen if you didn't make a component. But um, if you are building a model and you have lots of different solid shapes uh, you know, coming together, which is normally what happens when you're doing a woodworking project, and you don't make it a component, you're going to get some funky things happening. So make sure you remember to do that. OK, so this is kind of the basis for how you move around in SketchUp. Um, oh, by the way, if you wanted to edit the component, double click on it. And now you can edit different properties. Like I could change this uh, face. I can pull it out like that. 
okay, which is normally what we'd be doing is changing the dimensions of a piece of wood. So this is the basis of how you move around in SketchUp. Use your select tool to select out of something. Uh, use your orbit tool to change the view. Um, hold down shift to move like this. Um, hold down the orbit tool to rotate around like this. And use your scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Or if you're on a uh, if you're on a laptop, then you you know use two fingers on your trackpad to zoom in and out like that. Um, what else you need to know? Okay, let's go ahead and start modeling one of the pieces of your three-piece puzzle. So I will select this. I didn't mean to double click on it. If you double click on it, you start to edit the component. If you just do one click, you select the whole thing and you can hit delete. Okay, so let's go ahead and start making this, this piece. Um, we're going to use a rectangle tool. Actually, you know what? Instead of using a rectangle tool to start this, I could do that. I'm going to use a tape measure tool because uh, I want you to know how to use this tool as well. So we'll start on the origin. We'll do a single click there. And now we'll start to drag along the green axis. How far do we want to drag? We want to drag the length of piece number one, which is four inches. So I'm going to type four. And I don't need to type inches or anything. I just type four and then press Enter. And ooh, it's way down there. I'm zoomed way out. So we'll zoom in. There we go. Now once I've selected four inches, uh, or just rather four, and then press Enter, uh-oh, what happened? OK. Once I do that, once I make four, zoom back in. Oh, Lord. <laughs> uh, things, are, things are weird right now. Hold on. For some reason, it keeps wanting to snap me to a, a different spot. OK, so it puts a guide point. That's all I'm trying to show you, is this guide point right here. So the distance between the origin and that is four inches. OK. So that's our link. Let's go ahead and come over. I'm going to select the tape measure tool again, click on the origin. And I'm going to go ahead and do my first click. I'm going to come along the red axis. And what was the width of piece number one? It was one and a half inches. So you can type 1.5 right now, um, which is what I'm going to do because that's a little bit easier uh, than typing a fraction. And now I have a guide point over here at one and a half inches from the origin. Okay, so now I'm going to make a rectangle. So come to my rectangle tool. I'm going to start here on this guide point that I just made, and I'm going to come over here to the other guide point. Now you need to make sure, did you see how there's like different colors popping up? Uh, you need to make sure that you've got this blue rectangle, because that's SketchUp doing its inferencing thing and saying, uh, you want to make this rectangle in the blue dimension, right? So yes, we do. So we will make our second click. There we go. And now I'll try to orbit around and hope it doesn't send me all sorts of weird places. Now you see I've got this rectangle here, okay? Now, it, of course, it's just a plane. It's just a two-dimensional plane. I need to make it three dimensions. We need to add the thickness. So I'm going to hit the P on my keyboard for the push-pull. And I'm going to do a single click and start to come up. Anybody remember how, how thick is that piece of wood supposed to be? It's supposed to be half an inch. So um, this time, instead of writing um, 0.5, I'm going to write the fraction. I'm going to do 1 slash 2. And you can see that down there in the bottom right-hand corner where it says distance, 1 over 2. That's half an inch. Because it's in inches, I don't need to write inches, but I could. I could put that this mark, little quote mark. Now I'll press Enter. Okay. All right, so now I've got a block of wood that is the correct dimensions. All right. Now, before we do, actually, no, we're going to go ahead and, and do the inside notch. We'll do the inside notch, and then I'm going to show you how to make copies. All we have to do now is make a rectangle in the middle, and then we'll use the push-pull tool again, and um, push, instead of pull, we'll, we'll kind of delete that area in the middle. So I'll show you how to do that. We need to make some more measurements, so let's take our tape measure tool. And there's different ways to do this. I think I'm going to use the edge. I'm going to measure from the edge because it makes a dotted line when you do this uh, that's really useful. So I'm going to click once over here and then come this direction on the face of uh, the top of the rectangle there. And I'm going to come over a certain amount. What is it? Half an inch, right? So I can write 1 over 2, and it makes that measurement here. I can do the same thing from the other side, or, or I could do it from here. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to select here, come over this direction, 1 and a half. Okay. You start to see these guidelines, right? Now I still need some more 
more lines. So you can look at your uh, your draft if you can't remember some of the measurements. Um, so I did all that from memory. I'm going to look over here now. So this is supposed to be one and a quarter from the bottom. All right. So I'm going to come to the bottom edge and then move up this way, one and a quarter. So I could type, I'm going to show you how to type fractions in, in, the, in SketchUp. So I have one space, one over four. So that's one and one fourth inches. And press enter. <laughs> uh oh, it didn't work. Why didn't it work? Come this direction. One and one fourth. Press enter. Oh no. This is embarrassing. There. Now it's going. Why wasn't it going a second ago? That is so weird. Okay, guys. So I don't know why it wasn't giving me this line that I need right here. So you see, if you click on this edge and then drag that direction, that dotted line is going to come. That's like your guideline. And um, I don't know why it wasn't giving it to me a second ago. I, as far as I know, I was doing everything like normal. Um, I just kind of orbit around for a minute and made it work for me. So anyways, uh, we're coming this way 1.25 or one and a quarter inches um, over here. Same thing, come back this way, and I'll type one space, one slash four, and then press enter for one and a quarter. Now I've got all the intersecting points that I need. We're going to make a rectangle from here to here. So I'm going to hit the R button, rectangle tool, come over here, make a single click, and then come over here and make my second click. So I've got now this rectangle that's exactly where I need it to be. I'm going to show you something else now before we actually... Um, press this through. We're going to put some labels. So come over here to the tape measure tool. You can hit T, which will select this tape measure tool, which is what we just used to make all those guidelines. But right now I'm going to hit this dimension tool, dimensioning tool. And it's going to be, did I click it? Hit the dimensioning tool. Okay. Now when I select this and come over here to make my second click, it'll tell me the measurement. You have to make a third click to kind of move the actual dimension label wherever you want to move it. Okay, so once you've found a spot you like, make your third click, and now I will tell you where that is. Um, you could start, you know, deleting some guidelines if you wanted to uh, using the eraser tool. So let's pull the E button or this click over, click over there on that toolbox. And then if you kind of drag it across the guidelines, it will delete those guidelines. That's pretty neat. Okay, um, let's go ahead and hit the push-pull tool. I'm going to select this inside rectangle, and I'm going to orbit around so I can clear, more clearly see this edge I'm going to show you. Okay, back to the P, push-pull tool. And as I come down, I'm going to, I'm going to hit right here on this bottom edge. Um, and if I do my second click there, you'll see that it snaps the rectangle I was pulling down. It snaps it to that plane. It's part of the inferencing engine for it to do that. That's pretty nice. Oh, it got rid of our dimension when we did that. That's okay. We'll put it back later. So now I've got this pass through all the way. That's what we need. Now what we need to do is make this a component now. It's very important. Once we've kind of got everything set where we need it to be, we're going to triple click. And it'll select all the lines and planes associated with that make it a component, and of course we're going to call this piece number one, and press enter, and there we go. So piece number one is made, that was easy, um, let's see, I'm going to teach you all one more thing here, and then I'm going to let you figure out the rest. Um, so when I've got piece number one selected, so if I click out, I'll deselect it, Click in, it will select the whole thing. You can now press the M button, or you could come over here to your toolbar and select this tool, the Move button. I mean, the Move tool. So the Move tool will allow you, let me just show you before I do the fancy copy thing I'm going to show you. If I select a corner or an edge, um, I can, you know, I'll just do a single click and then it will start to move this component anywhere you want. You make your second click and it moves the whole thing together. If this wasn't a component, then it would be like stretching the geometry out. I'm gonna undo that, put it back there. Um, also with your move tool, just so you know, if you select these little red um, grabby points, 
then you can rotate the thing, which is also super useful. I'm not going to do that right now. What I am going to do is inside the move tool, if you press control on your keyboard, you'll see it puts a little plus sign underneath the arrows. So if I hit it, press it again, it goes away. If I press control, it pops that little plus sign there. Okay, I'm just toggling it on and off so you can see what I'm talking about right there on my cursor. So if I keep the plus button on there, this is actually going to make a copy now of my uh, component. So, and this only works if this piece is a component, okay? So I'm going to now do a click on this corner, drag it over here, and I'm gonna, and I want you to do this on your model too. Keep your pieces in alignment. And it doesn't matter, I don't care how far over you bring it, but just like we did on the draft, basically, you bring it over a little ways. Now make my second click. And while we're here, we'll just go ahead and bring, whoops, I forgot. <laughs> okay, we'll do it again. So I've got my move tool selected, hit control, come over here and make a third piece. All right, because we've got three pieces, right? Now, here's a very, 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 very important step. Don't miss this step. Now, if I make, so right now I've got th three different pieces, but I've only got one component. So SketchUp thinks that all these three pieces are the same. So if I were to come in here, which you're gonna do in a second, and edit one of the f features, all three components move together. Okay, I'm not gonna do that, so I hit Escape to get out of that. So what you need to do is come over to this one, right click on it, and right underneath, you know, right in the middle, under where it says edit component, you'll see where it says make unique. So I need to make that one unique. Come over here to this one and make unique. All right. So let's see what happens when we say edit component. I don't know if there's a way to change the name of just that one. Probably there is somewhere. Entity info. Piece number two. Wait, what? I didn't name that piece number two. What? And that one says piece number three. Look at that. I did not. Ah, that was a nice unexpected. <laughs> That's awesome, y'all. So it automatically labeled it piece number one, piece number three. SketchUp's so smart. Okay, so here we go. We're going to put the notch in here. Now, oh, did you expect me to put the notch in for you? Now, I want you to figure that part out. Okay, that's going to be the part that you got to figure out. So use the tape measure tool. Use the push pull tool and just delete the areas that you need to. Uh, you know, there is maybe one more thing that you need to know, so I'll show you that. Um, if you use your tape measure tool, come off the bottom, just like it says over here on the draft, we're going to come up off the bottom 1 and 13 sixteenths, right there, 1 and 13 sixteenths, right here. And then the piece number 3 is 1 and 3 fourths. And don't forget this little notch back here. So let's do that. So come off the bottom. All right, I didn't want to show you everything. I'm going to show you this though. 1 space 13 slash 16. Oh, man, the tape measure tool is not working again. Oh, you know what? Maybe it's because I have the entity selected. Oh, that's probably what the problem was. All right, so make sure that your component is not blue like this because then funky things happen. I, I realize that's probably what the problem was. So now I'm going to come here. I'm going to go back this direction. Oh, yeah, there's a few more things I need to show you. Otherwise, you'd get a little lost. I'm going to come back here. One space, 13 over 16, and press Enter. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing from this corner. Do a single click there, drag along. So if you drag along the line in the direction you want to measure, that's really important. You've got to do that drag and that draggy thing first. So I'm going to do one space 13 over 16. Okay. And now just to make sure that we've got everything correct, you can hit your um, guide point over here. We're going to select this guide point and then drag over here to the other guide point, and it'll tell you right there what the measurement is. It says 3 eighths. Okay, so 3 eighths of an inch is what we want. Good. Now, uh, we need to make some lines. Now, this is why I didn't tell you before. So, hit the L button on your keyboard or come over here and select this pencil, and that's the line tool. If you select this guide point now, and then move your mouse this direction, you see it says on edge in piece two, and it gives you that purple square. It's ref, uh, referencing, and yeah, it's inferencing to this this thing over here. 
So we're going to draw a line on top of this component. Um, and then we'll come over here and do the same thing. Okay, and then um, actually you need to, I, I skipped over saying that. Let me back up so you guys don't get confused. So if I do, if I press here, and then drag across the face to this edge and do my second click. It makes the line, but look, it's our, it's it's um, it's wanting you to draw the next line, okay? And and so you see the green uh, circle. It's like I've already made my first click. Well, I don't want to do that because if I make my second click now, it'll draw this diagonal line across. So to get out of this, I'm pressing Escape now on my keyboard, top left hand button on your keyboard. And now I'm going to do another line over here clicking here, dragging across. Make sure that your line is on the red axis when you do this. You see how my line is red? If I were to come like this direction, it would be green. Uh, if I wanted to go up in the sky, it would be blue. So that red, blue, group, bleh, that red green, and blue um, are the three main axis, like the square grid, the perpendicular parallel lines, okay? So if it's not on a red axis and you're having trouble doing that, you can use the the buttons on your keyboard, um, the up and left and right arrow keys. So um, if you do to the left, it will constrain it on the green axis. If you go to the right, it will constrain your line on the red axis. And if you press up, it will constrain your line on the blue axis. So go ahead and press to the right if you need to in this case, and then we'll do a second click. Okay. Um, again, I'm pressing escape to get out of that line thing, and I'm going to draw one more line right here. Okay, now, we think we have all the lines to push this notch out, but we need to do one thing before we do. Triple click, no, not triple click, double click on this, and then hit the P button. Oh, no, I was afraid of that. Okay, so um, I should have made those two lines when I was editing this component. All right, so we have to get into edit mode for that component and then draw these lines. And now we'll be able to press this section all the way down to the bottom. Make sure that it's on edge and then make your second click, okay? So yeah, sorry, I, uh, dang it, I messed that up. I should probably edit that out. Fart. Now I'm just going to leave it in. Just going to leave it in y'all can figure it out. Okay, so let's see. If I select this section, hit delete, use my E um, to erase the lines I didn't need. Okay, there we go. So you can clean it up. And orbit over here so I can better see this line. So you guys saw I made a mistake in there. Um, and you followed along with me, so you probably made that same mistake. So sorry about that. Uh, okay, but now we've cleaned it up. Now you see that there are actually some guide points left over inside this model. Um, oh, and that line is left over too. So I can select that line, that guide point, and just remove the junk that you don't need. And that's just like called scrubbing your craft or your drawing. Okay, so now we've got that in there. Um, now let's go ahead and label these guys. Um, label some uh, dimensions with the dimensioning tool. Why not? Uh, the dimensioning tool will only snap to certain places, um, like midpoints. So, but it will like to start. So, if I select this midpoint, then I can come over here. Um, oh, I can't. I know it won't let me select that actually. Okay, so if it if you're trying to make a dimension in a place and it doesn't want you to, all you got to do is use the tape measure tool to make a guide point there. Um, so now that's there. I mean, this is an extra step um, because now you've got to go erase that guideline here in a second. But it creates an intersection for you to put your uh, dimension. And be careful that like you're making your third click for your dimension in the right way because look, you could go up in the blue axis and don't do this, this is messy. But now look, the dimension is way the heck up there. So we don't want that, right? Be careful when you're doing that. I wish there was this keyboard shortcut for the dimensioning tool. If anybody knows what that is, let me know. 
Um, and don't, don't 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 start pressing all the buttons on your keyboard right now to figure it out. It might mess something up. Okay. So anyway, you could make the same measurement down here, and then just snap it to the green axis using your uh, key, uh, your directions on your what are those called? The uh, up, down, left, right. The name escapes me at the moment. Um, okay. Sorry. This is kind of stream of consciousness. I don't have a script. Um, okay, back to the dimensioning tool here, and so you would do want to label all the dimensions, please, for your draft that are important. Um, if you are doing a bunch of dimensioning, sometimes if you have the dimensioning tool selected, it wants to see how it's turning the one and a half dimension blue. It it's thinking, it's inferencing, you know, it's asking me, do you want to edit where that label is? So if I clicked it now, I'd be moving that label. Um, what I want to actually do is select this corner. And so you see it's kind of giving me some trouble. So just make sure that the color, the right color for everything is selected before you make your click. So I'm going to click there, then come here, and then do a third click right about there. Okay, so three-eighths. What else is important? The distance between here and the bottom. Make sure that your arrow isn't crooked like this. Um, again, if you think it might be crooked, you can use the... Um, arrow keys, that's the word, arrow keys, to make this click, okay? And so, okay, here's an example of it not wanting to cooperate with me. So um, I can't make a click here for my dimensioning tool because uh, there's not like a point there. There's a line, but there's not a point on the line. So I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to try this. Let's see if I can, oh, you know what? I know what to do. Come to this corner. Hmm. Right now it's selecting the corner at the bottom of my piece, like the the on the other side of the thickness. So what I'm going to do is orbit a little bit. Um, if you change your view, kind of you can change what SketchUp inferences to. It's an important thing to know. So here we'll click on this endpoint, and then come to this spot, and then bring our dimension over here. Notice when I orbit around. Uh, the dimensions, the numbers for those dimensions keep pointing at the camera, at your view. So that's nice. Okay. So I'm not going to do piece number three with you. You've done, I've done all of these two pieces with you. I want you guys to figure out piece number three. That would be nice. Um, bonus points if you can figure out how to put some words up here that would say like piece number one, piece number two, piece number three, just like we did on this drawing right here. Whoops. Trying to comment on my own thing. All right, so you see see what I mean? We're going to title piece number one, piece two, piece number three. Now, you don't need to do a side view, of course, because look, I've already got the side view. Oh, that's an important measurement that we didn't uh, label yet. <laughs> look, there's that dimension that got kind of shoved down there toward the bottom. I wonder if I can select that. Probably not very easily. Oh, there she is. Then we'll delete that. Okay. So let's also label the thickness of our pieces of wood. Um, dimension tool, select from here to here. Should be half an inch, right? And we'll keep that on the face over there in the red dimension. Okay. Now, how do we share this? How do we save this with Mr. Broadway? Okay. There's two different ways. Um, first of all, click over here in the Save button and enter a model name. Okay, three-piece puzzle. Okay, and it's going to save it in your Google Drive folder wherever you want to. All right, so it's saved, and it tells you at the top it has saved it. Okay, and then um, now that it's saved, you can do this. You can download the current model to your computer. And it will download what's called an SKP file. Um, this is one way you can share it with me. Um, now, I want you to know about this. You don't need to, to share your three-piece puzzle with me like this. Um, but if you do hit download, uh, you can select different you know, versions of an SKP file. Select the most current, and then say OK. And it will send this file to your downloads folder. And uh, I do this quite often to make, as you can see right here, to make sure that I have backups of stuff on my hard drive. Um, these files aren't very big, 
you can do that if you wanted to share an actual SKP file that someone can open up and orbit around and you know and, and edit and stuff like that. In this case, once you're through, all I want to see from you is a picture of this. And so you can do that also in SketchUp. So go over here to the folder, the file menu, and then go to export as a PNG. And this will download a picture. So we're going to click that. And now look at this. This gives you a like a sort of like a print window dialog box here, okay? And you know, you'll have piece number three done when you do this. Don't send me this. Don't send me an incomplete. But you can still orbit around. This is like you've got your orbit tool selected. You can hold down shift to move it around. Get that angle exactly like you want. Make sure I can read all your measurements pretty much. Um, so actually, uh, in that case, you might want to move like your letters uh, or rather the numbers like one half and all that. You know, that's a little bit hard to read. Um, you might want to move them where it's a little bit more clear. And um, you can also kind of like use these buttons if you, you know, if you ever needed to. I don't think in this case you need to. But, you know, you can bring it, bring it, snap it to the front of your model and then give me an aerial view. I think this is a good view right here. You can kind of see all three dimensions of all three pieces. And then anyways, you're going to hit the blue button, export as a PNG. And then it will download that file for you. So what is a PNG? A PNG is a simply a picture file. It's a very simple picture file. So if, when I open this up, I'll see your picture. And I won't be able to orbit around and look at everything, but I won't need to either, okay, because I'll just see this. So that'll be lovely, okay? So this is what you're going to need to attach, this file, a PNG file. Please attach that to the assignment to submit that, okay? So, um, you know, let me know what you think about using SketchUp versus drafting on paper. Do you like one better than the other? Uh, do you think one is better? like in, inherently better than the other um what you know what would be better about drawing maybe what would be better about using the computer i use both um i kind of like both um and uh, i have my own opinions but i'd like to hear your opinions so let me know in uh, a, an email or a comment or whatever love to hear the feedback um we're going to be using sketchup more and more i have 12 computers in my shop but everybody can use sketchup from their own computer uh, it doesn't really work on a mobile um, device uh, at all. I think you can view files, but you really need a, um, a keyboard and mouse to be able to do this. Okay, guys? Um, thanks. Uh, make sure to hit that like, uh, subscribe button, ring the bell if you want to yeah, have notifications for whenever I come out with a new video. And uh, you can visit my Patreon and you know find me on all the social media and you know like comment subscribe and all that no just joking all right see you guys soon broadway out